So it's not like a common board, have they? So, yeah, why, why wouldn't you get something like clean? They just do like a vodka mix. I just thought yeah, as a Kiwi chick that you just drink beer. Oh, it's cool. <clears throat> you, did you really? just think that? I just thought that, yeah. Well, stop thinking? When did you stop thinking? It? Yeah. It was like a 60-year-old thing. You just yeah, stopped yeah. thinking. Do you open doors? Or you just become so like for women's misogynistic stuff? or something? I, I opened the door today. Mm-hmm. Is it Italian? Or did you go through frontwards or sideways? He first, I kept that. <laughs> he got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who put me out? Oh, some friends. It's, just, it's like the, the 400 or the 700 <laughs> you know, kilo woman on the bed or, or a man uh, on the bed <laughs> where they have to take the roof off and crane oh, them out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I love those shows. Do you? How do you hey, do you? Well, you, it's a bit close to the bone. <laughs> and I, but I, I love them because I look at them and go, how the fuck have you eaten yourself into that position? I mean, oh, we no, all I love understand. food and bad foods taste well, better than good food. that's the first but how the hell do you allow that to be on TV? Yeah. <laughs> well, what makes it good viewing? People want to watch it. Yeah, it. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, having dinner. Let's you... put something really inappropriate like an obese person who needs yeah. to be craned out of there. But imagine being the person saying, look, this is, gonna, this is going to be good for you. We're going to film this thing where we crane you out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, we, we what's in it for me? Yeah. Honestly, it would be good TV. What's the plan for this fucking show anyhow? I, you know, I think it's probably an opportune time to ask, given that we're all here in the room. Well, we, yeah, well, we don't need to work it out live on camera on, on mic. It'll be better. It gives us more, gives us more clout more live on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, people probably need to know how these negotiations get down. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and you can look good or bad. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. Right, so um, it's a welcome back to um, Lana. Oh, no, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, back, Lana. Welcome help. back, Rick. How are you? Help me, please. You good? Yeah, I'm here to help. But obviously, yeah. you need a little bit of help with these two. Yeah. Who and are back? You welcome back, boys. Both back from Europe. Yeah, it seems that way. Fresh. Looking, not, well, fresh isn't a word I'd actually use, but. No, I don't, I don't think that's a, that a word that we'd use for any of us these days. <laughs> no, not no, anymore, no. unfortunately. Yeah. But, Least um, of all, Rick. Yeah, I reckon you've got about four good summers. Forty. Four good summers. That'd be stupid. You're well, in your I prime. mean like on Three the winters. These are the best yeah, years. On the assumption Twilight that you years. get, you know, four bad summers too. You know, that'd make you what? Ninety. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, nice to have you back. You have a nice time in, in sunning yourselves in Europe? It wasn't easy, Rick, you know, having to do this podcast <laughs> once a week and get up and, you know, time zones are yeah, serenous, wasn't it? So I had all the cam all your mics and stuff flogged when I was in Italy, so it was very difficult. How yeah. much you get from? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey for the trip. Yeah. So, um, so you've missed um, a lot of the Olympics, obviously, mm. um, because you've been travelling. No, we saw quite a lot. Did you? Yeah, it wasn't in Paris. We did have TV a lot of places. <laughs> um, no, no, I saw quite a lot. Man, I haven't seen anything. I, I watched See? Lisa Carrington today. You know, win the gold. In, in the 500, she was, she's amazing. Eh? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. She's yeah. Amazing. amazing. Yeah. It's just when you see a performer at the Olympics that's that dominant, like, you know, look, probably five performers across the whole Olympics are like that, you know, and she was one of them. Um, I Also, Elise Andrews in the cycling who won uh, a couple of gold, she was amazing too. She was just dominant. Like You watched her and you, you knew that she was going to win. And yeah. a true great, you know, that remember back with Bolt in two thousand. and. 12, whatever, like, you know, he hadn't been written off, but they were saying that these these other guys have sort of probably got it. And same with Lisa Carrington, you know, that yeah. she's me, you know. Yeah. But I just kind of deep is down it, thought the experience would come through, you know. Just age, because she's 36 and these younger athletes. Well, what is it, yeah, is well, because she was losing a little bit to, of course, um, the other amazing. Fisher. Yeah, yeah Amy you know, Fisher. And, yeah. Amy Fisher. You know, well, she yeah. was meant to challenge it. Like it was going to be pretty close, yeah. and she yeah. she got fourth, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and was a long way behind. That just must be the mentality. Just, just got a mean, strong pep. Yeah, right? so they're talking about twenty eight now for her. One of the great performances was uh, Hassan, who won bronze in the women's five thousand, bronze in the women's uh, ten thousand, and then won the marathon, all Jesus, in the same Olympics. So she obviously big, doesn't have a sprint true. finish. <laughs> No, needs something to work on. It's yeah. always good to have something to improve on. Why don't they yeah. just keep that in the one event? And mm. you know, just the first 5,000 metres, who wins that? And then yeah. 10,000, who wins that? Yeah. And then who wins the, the final? Instead yeah, of so, having so you could events. basically, Kip Kloge would have won three yeah. gold medals in the one race. Right. He yes, might win the first two, and but lose the marathon, you know what I mean? And, and you do the first 5,000 metres, first 10,000 metres on the track, 
and then you take off into the streets, yeah. you know. Maybe or just pull out after you've won the 5,000, you know. Yeah, well, you said, oh, fucking, yeah. I've got two medals now. And really. what, what have you enjoyed, Nana, please? Uh, this last week? Well, I've gone back and looked at highlights because I was um, busy la- over the last few days and actually last night I spent some time, I went back, went through the gymnastics. Really, I mean, yeah. they are the superheroes of... Simone Biles. All of them. I like yeah. just watch it. I watched trampoline and then both the New Zealanders, you know, they, they sort of lucked out at the end, but they were both really good. Well, she fell off the bar. <clears throat> Simone, yeah. The beam. A beam. Oh, was it? Well, someone, yeah, someone brought up the point you know, with her. Uh, it was on Facebook, so it wasn't. This is my concept, but she can jump. I know the pad, it's slightly padded the ground, but she can jump sort of like t- she's ten foot or something in the ground. I mean, yeah. off the ground or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like an like she's on a trampoline. Why doesn't she do high jump? Because she's coming from a low place, I suppose. No, but you know what I mean. Her when she gets the she flips her way in. She, when she, she gets they're not allowed right to up. do that. They're not allowed to do that. And, oh, and, yeah. and But they should. Why so can't they run and do the trip? It's just, oh, it's just oh, the high jump. Go. As long as you, yeah. and, and it's the same thing with there's another sport that they should have been able to. Yeah, the, the long jump where they can actually do a, a, a forward flip yeah, and that's been to. canned and they used, they used to, to and they got, yeah. got a lot further. Mm. Higher yeah. risk. Also, I think um, because her, she jumps off two feet and in the high jump you jump off one foot. We won the gold in the high jump. How good was yeah, that? Yeah, that was great. And he didn't want to draw. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll go yeah, to sudden death. Jumping. Love yeah. that attitude. It's good. So a lot to be most... proud of, coupled with the fact that Perhita Capita <laughs> at a greater level than than any other nation. Yeah. You know? I think we're third on the per capita. Who's first? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you're been. wrong. Okay, well, we'll check. Per head of, uh, well, by, by comparison to GDP, the Australians are first. Okay. Mm. I always find when, at, at the end of the Olympics, I start thinking that, you know, everybody probably does this, what events you could possibly compete at if you had to, you know. and the what, bit, would, what would you compete at? Well, the first thing you do is you start to eliminate the ones you wouldn't be any good at. The athletic ones. Your, well, my case probably be a polo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem with Brad br- smudging the bar off. Yeah. You know, yeah. smashing. Yeah. So, and is this a bit of um, self promotion or something? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's a coordination thing. Nothing to do with, yeah. nothing to do with that. Um, <laughs> why, what do you hit? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you take those ones out of the equation yeah. and then you start thinking about it. And I've, I've actually realised there's absolutely nothing. Nothing you could do. No, I don't think there's anything I, I could train for. You probably fencing or something. Or oh, come on, mate! No, no, you, you're gravity fed. You you need to be in uh, something. <laughs> you, you're diving. Winter Olympics. <laughs> winter Olympics. Yeah, we're going to winter. It's different. Fed. That's Bob's different. Fed. That's different. Like, you, you don't even push the sled. You, just, you we just force you into the front yeah. of the sled. Have like they got putting backgammon? lead in the end of a, a missile, <laughs> and then three guys lug you off, and then you just dra- drag them down. Well, right, Eddie first to die if we have a bad crash. Yeah, yeah. But, what, 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 would I do? what would I do if I went to the Olympics? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Watch and see you. Hold up obscene cards. I don't know. Yeah. Something to make a fool of yourself. Wouldn't I be able to compete uh, in something? Commentate. <laughs> Maybe discus or something or a hammer. Uh, I mean, oh, <laughs> catching the hammer. <laughs> yeah, but. No, you couldn't do anything at the Olympics, right? Did Apparently, I? you were really quick when you were young. Yeah. You were telling us. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, that's you, an interesting thing. What, what do you think you would have been best at at the Olympics? So, what about is there not something for over sixty-year-olds that you can compete in? What would you compete in? What would you like to compete well, in? As Share I'm, with us. As I'm in my mid thirties, like late forties, um, high jump was my sport. Yep. Was, We're not talking about the 1968 Olympics. We're talking about these <laughs> ones. <laughs> Imagine, like I, I, I don't think I think we should do this. I think we should go to the street and film it. I don't reckon you could get over one meter sixty. No, I couldn't. Now, that's not. That's not. That'd a lot, be like right? jumping over you, Mark. Yeah, it would be exactly. <laughs> you know, with with maybe Aaron on my shoulders. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I one sixty. Yeah. That that yeah. I've just had a I've just had a new knee put in. Give me a break. Oh right, have you? Sure yeah. didn't know that. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. So the poke fun at myself. What what, what how are your hips? Yeah, they're good. <laughs> yeah, shoulders. You know, Can fine. you lift your hands above your head? Yeah, yeah. What about your neck? Can you? <laughs> I didn't realise I had to come and do a medical <laughs> before we carried on. Uh, you only pills for what, your heart. What would you? No. What would you do, um, Lana, if you were at the Olympics? Gymnastics? <laughs> no, no. I'd, li- I'd like swimming. Can swimming. I? Oh, I'd yeah, love to swim. see you on the dive board. I, I used you to do diving. Mark. See there. Yeah. Uh, there how do I know that? Yeah, I, I used to watch. Like, I tell you what, I get <laughs> master of none, but jack of all. That's um. Oh yeah. So, so do we I can move the on then. All right, all right, Mister. <laughs> yeah, Daley Thompson. Potentially, that, I'd, I'd have liked to have been a decathlete. 
Would you? Yeah, like but, Simon Pollman. Yeah, but you couldn't have done any of the jumping high things. Well, you don't have to. You can get counter that with just the sheer I've seen Mark jump tenacity. onto the, on, on the set. You, he jumped up. I jumped over the bar, but the bar's um, like a no, meter pointy. Like hey, don't get so angry, mate. You know, we've worked out pretty categorically that you'd be bloody awful at everything, you know, and now, you know, I'm just saying decathlon. I think gymnastics is also it, for you. I think, maybe I think, put it out I to reckon, um, no, rhythmic reckon, gymnastics. Yeah, I think rhythmic gymnastics would be you. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Ma- maybe so no if, 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 if it was a case, Can you spell it. <laughs> if, it was a, spell if it was a case of not making an ass of yourself, like literally looking like you're the part and yeah. all that, probably yeah. have to be the hundred or two hundred meters, because you could bang, start, blow a hammy, pull a hammy, yeah. five yeah. meters, yeah. and it's happened be to, screwed, the, yeah. to the best. Yeah. For and life. you just go, you know, yeah. what, what could have been if I didn't blow a hammy? You know? <laughs> Did you notice that since 1924? To now, less than half a second they've taken off 100 metres. I saw that. It's unbelievable. Yeah, with all the technology. Yeah, all the technology. No improvement. Like Jesse Owens yep. in 36 was yep. doing 10 point. Well, they reckon to give him blocks and the different shoes, yep. he would have been second only to Bolt. <laughs> What's your favourite ever Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> Olympic 100 metre that you ever seen. <laughs> yeah, well, they compare it. Um, there's I, nothing in it. Jesse Owens was good. I remember Jesse Owens. There was one event that uh, that we could probably all no, we wouldn't even have a chance at this actually. Is um, <laughs> David Boone's record? David Boone, fifty three cans uh, from here to uh, to England. I mean, we can't go without talking about it. I mean, it's a mighty you, you effort. Can. can it be beaten? No, not now. I, I think Hadley tried it. He got to seven. <laughs> 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 Mark had to go on the tram coming down here, got the tram. <laughs> yeah. Then vomited all over the people in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> they call themselves the best team in the world, the Australians at the moment. They haven't even tried that record yet. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's the team spirit? I mean, it's, it's hopeless. It was actually the Qantas stuff that how it worked it out. We're just having a quiet drink at the start, yeah. then and all of a sudden a the, flight, the flight service director said, hey, let's Do you know you've had 24 cans, Bernie? And, <laughs> Maybe just, if we have a roster system and, yeah. and work from there, yeah. Merv, you should have two dozen with him and Dean, I have a few, and and 53 cans See, it's a mighty was... effort. I mean, that will live longer than the game itself. Well, probably the thing <clears> that people don't understand, before we got onto the plane, we had a, a training session, remember the training camp we had in Melbourne? Yeah. And they took blood tests and all that, and the doctor came back and gave us a cholesterol and all that crap that comes back with blood tests. And then he came out and said, and probably the, the most alarming feature is that 16 of the 17 men's in this squad have got enough alcohol in their system, in their blood, uh, to say that there's 16 alcoholics in the Australian cricket team. <laughs> and Terry, Terry Alderman stood up the back and said, that is an alarming fact. Who is the one bloke that's not having a gun? Look, I know, you know, tragic as it is, is, you know, a lot of those Australian cricketers are no longer, no longer with us. Yeah, and Merv's uh, still with us. Yeah, Dean's yes. unfortunately passed yeah, yeah. away. I'm just yeah. um, talking all the bit. I'm just going to whip out for a quick wee. I'll be right straight back. Don't be long. Yeah, yeah. Be. You struggle to get that kind of service on a flight now, though. That's the problem. You never, you never get that kind of support, would you? From well, that's the, from that's, the... that's a good thing, though. Like you don't really want people consuming that much alcohol on a flight. No. Well, not unless you're having a crack at the record, you know. <laughs> oh, should I do you? Remind me not to go to that bathroom. <laughs> 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 She's changed. <laughs> How are you, bro? Good, mate. Good, good. Oh, lovely to see you. Lovely yeah. to see you. Hey, I see you all again. Yeah. 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 You've been watching the Olympics? Oh, you yes. went to the Olympics? I went to the Olympics, yeah. Well, not. You went to watch. Went to watch young fellows in the sevens team, and uh, it was great. Um, the French did a great job. 72,000 from the first kickoff, man. Yeah. And, and they were there for the whole four days through the women's and the men's. It was six days, actually. Yeah. Well, well, see, so there, there, now awesome. you ask what could we have done at the Olympics? I could have played sevens, maybe. Well, you know? possibly, yeah. Rushy too. Yeah, yeah. So back to your question, Rick. What would you have done still at the Olympics? Still, still, <laughs> leaves, was, still leaves me out. Break <laughs> dancing, break dancing, mate. Well, what'd you think of the uh, break dancer? Like, uh, like it's a serious issue. Like, I actually felt sorry for. Did you? I thought it was yeah. a piss take. I thought it was an act- actual piss take when I saw it. I thought, oh, somebody, the Aussies only the Aussies could you know have a laugh like this. But she, she beat the people from New Zealand. Mate. She, she had, was representing Oceania. Yeah, they had the Oceania champs. I mean, we our our top um, B girl um, pulled out just before the champs. So um, 
They obviously didn't invite any brown people, mate. That's okay, <laughs> hey, hey. quite it's, obvious. It's just no need for racism well, on hey, this hey, show. We managed to keep that off the you podcast. Know, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm here <laughs> now, so it's all right. We've got through Until all the now, others. Yeah. It's absolutely bloody brilliant, you know, yeah. and, and quite apt. You know? Thank God. <laughs> I can so talk like about people can't dance. Why there's no white guys in hundred meters? We can talk about that now. No yeah. issues here. Look, yeah. when you um... <laughs> there are certain things white people can't do, you know, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of things they can do, but a lot of things they can't. Everyone's different, you know, and, and dancing, you know, doesn't tend to be, you know, something that we sort of. Hey, how about darts at the Olympics? That'll work. Darts, yeah, darts. You know, white guys could win that. Yeah, you you be good. No, at darts. I was okay at darts. I'm talking about you know those those bombs. Yeah. Well, uh, look, with the huge big motors, and yeah. it's like a steadying influence. It's like a you know yeah, it's ball like of gravity. Just, them still. You know, like they rest a pint on it, and they just focus in. Can you um, back to the break dancer? Here's a little bit of footage of her dancing. No, don't no, 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 no. This is like this is where she's good. This is with the Australian team. Look, the Australian team's embraced it. <laughs> I think I think the one guy who who could comment, uh, you know, from the illustrious uh, you know, thing that was once Sports Cafe is the human cannibal. He really can break dance. It's part of his party routine. I think we've probably all seen it, at, 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 you know. But he's as he's aged, he's sort of regressed a wee bit. And now he's got a new routine. What so he goes. Well, his new routine's quite good actually. He goes into a a, a packed dance floor. And he's dancing away and he pretends to have a heart attack. <laughs> and he drops like a stone, right? And that sort of the music doesn't stop. Yeah. But people start, you know, clearing a bit of a gap around him. Like and a circle around him. Like a circle, you know. And, you know, some people go for the things. And by the time they do, he just starts twitching a finger to the music. And then he starts moving his feet, and then he's reborn again, and he jumps the up. The phoenix from the ashes. The phoenix from the ashes, yeah. and it either works a treat, or he basically gets booed out of the house. You know, he's running about fifty percent at the moment, but to watch it is quite quite something. Imagine that at the Olympics. <laughs> the fake your own death. Uh, yeah, and I said to him, mate, "Come on, we're going to see it." You know, every now and again when you go out, we're going to see it. And, uh, I think he didn't the need it recently, didn't he? He did it in Christchurch, and it was an absolute rip roaring success down there. They Loved it. So the fact up at the Duke of Marlborough up, up in Russell and people just walking over the top of him to get the bar, you know, it just made no no impact at all. You roll know? up north. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see that every day. Horses, people horses. Falling over. Pick your buddy, <laughs> pick your routine one. before you do it, you know? <laughs> pick your audience. That's good. It tells a story. It's a good routine. Oh yeah, but he does it just to that awkward length where they go, shit, he's actually died, you know, and then the little twitch to the music, and then once he's up and he's just ripping his shirt off and unleash me and it's Quite something to see. He could comment with authority on. on so that when particular. we when we when the human cannibal said to us, "Please don't mention my name anymore." Um, I'm, you know, I've got a new life now. I'm, I'm in the business. I'm doing my own thing. You know, I don't like to look back at my past. Is that you've mentioned them every week since? We've all that. got new lives. Right? We don't have the luxury of you know editing our past, do we? Mm. Mm. And I mean, you, you know, some people still know you as that guy. Yeah. You know, snail human guy. cannibal, yeah, snail you know, guy, human cannibal, or Ralph. I mean, we're not actually saying his actual name. We're just alluding to the chap who wore a suit. It's going to be funny one day when someone does actually have the paddles handy. <laughs> 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 Hold him over, beast, just waiting for his moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smack. You know, rip his shirt. He rips his shirt off and they, they bang him, and he, and he actually yeah. he won't be doing that again. <laughs> Be a got, we're, we've got a, we've got a little club in Auckland, and uh, you know we we ummed and ahed about because it's a few guys. So one of the guys had a quadruple, and you know getting to that age and stage where something nasty could happen on a Friday night. So to be you know good hosts, do you put the paddles on the wall? Mm. We had a bit of a sort of committee meeting around it. And we went, oh, fuck. There's more chance of somebody whacking somebody for fun. Exactly. You know, so we said, especially no. your crowd. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> It's a weapon. Come here. Drop, drop the shirts, mate. Yeah. Drop the shirts. Come here. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Come on, get it. Just see it happening. Yeah, take off like a dog with lighter fluid on the tail. Come here, think you can get me. You've got to do a beer, tequila shot. And it's out. Oh, this 
it's, you know it's going there. That's why we're going to lose one or two for a heart attack, but we'd lose six or seven if we had the paddles here. It's a balance. Uh, three moons. So, um, trying to bring the show back. Um, so, Rashi, what are you playing? Are you coaching rugby again this year? Yeah, I, I coached the uh, club side up in Northland, mid Northern. Uh, we didn't. We lost in the semis this year. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's going all right. Enjoying it, yeah. And you actually la- last year played, played. Yeah, I had three. I played three games. Uh, well, the, hang on, I should say I played. I ran out there three times. Didn't do a hell of a lot. Got a couple of steals and two yellow cards. But uh, <laughs> someone hadn't told me that band punching, mate. <laughs> but if, but yeah, <laughs> who knew, you know? If you're running out there like that, someone's obviously going off. What positions are you running on to? Do you get a cho- – I mean, is it on the wing or where do you get – I just – I just pick where I go and Jeff the other young fellas got to move. <laughs> so, yeah. you, did, you, did you get a few rucks in? Did you get a rucking still? Yes, I got a couple of rucks. Yeah, I told us some guy, I said, don't do that, I'll smack you. He didn't believe me. <laughs> 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 that was one of the yellow cards. <laughs> it was, I, I enjoyed it. But a lot of the, the guys I played against didn't enjoy it so much. But it's a little bit old school. It's different yeah. now. It's just so different. Yeah, so different. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think of the obviously the All Blacks um, going down to Argentina? Um, I actually think? haven't watched that game yet, but um, yeah, no, man, pretty man. disappointing. Yeah, same. I didn't see it. I just see it. tried to watch it, but mm. look, I'm, I don't know maybe like you guys, but that's a loss, thirty eight point loss all win. That's a lot of points to leak, isn't it? Thirty eight points. Yeah, mm. we gave away a couple of um, soft tries, um, two soft tries actually, um, <laughs> which which hurt us, um, but. Um, I sort of thought having two ex All Blacks and a and a and a um, star racer that uh, you know we'd have some, <laughs> some in inside depth, on it. inside on to the a, game. A bacon salesman. I was on the plane. Sorry, none at all. All oh, right, so not zero. Yeah. Um, but I did. I'm pretty sure they'll bounce back. But um, you know, Argent, from all accounts, Argentina, we, we didn't just lose it; they they won it. Yeah, so I, I heard they played pretty well. So the yeah. issues with the line out still. <clears throat> yeah, towards the end. But I, I mean, I did, how many penalties? I did take a lot of solace from um, one of your sort of instructional videos about how to handle a loss. And, and uh, you know, in 2003, we lost the World Cup semi final. I was with you at that game. Yeah, we went. We, 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 we went with we, Peter Fitzsimons. Yeah. Sat with him. And they would have been hard to lose with Peter Fitzsimons. Yeah. Right well, he was. Was he wearing at, his bandana then? He, and he was good. Yeah, he was. And reminding us constantly through the game that we were losing. Um, I'm, I'm, the most poignant thing for me, we left about a minute before the end of the game just to try and get on the train before everyone else. Everyone was going, oh, bad losers, whatever. We jumped on the train, remember, back to Sydney. And guess who we were sitting next to? You? Remember? Simon Porter. Graham yeah. Henry. Graham Henry. That's right. Oh, really? His brain was going tick, tick, tick straight away. Yeah. Can't believe he left early. We just literally—it was a big stadium. We, we tried yeah, to, you know. Yeah, that's right. And we, you know, we lost. But this is this is how we dealt with the loss. Well, this is how how you dealt with that particular loss. Mm. Well, this is pretty much where it all happened. I was feeling pretty down after the All Blacks loss. And I went in search of answers. All the same, I got on the wrong train and ended up here, about 300 miles from Sydney, in a place called Katumba. I didn't think things would get much worse than that, but that night they did. I got abducted by aliens. After a few drinks at my hotel, I went to bed, and that's when it happened. The following was a dramatic recreation. I was taken to the mothership on a tractor beam. It was big. While I was there, they did all sorts of experiments on me. One, of course, was the rectal mind probe. This involved sticking a cumbersome device up my backside and downloading information. God only knows what they hope to achieve. I can't even send a fax that way. I woke up hours later, deep in the Blue Mountains. I was all alone. I struggled back to Katoomba, confused and angry that they hadn't used a faster modem. I've seen some strange things, though, yeah. Meteors that sort of stop and change direction. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. head scratching stuff. Yeah. I needed to share my experience with someone. And, and this white room sort of smelled like Parmesan cheese. And the, the smaller one with the little silver boots on and that little jumpsuit, I think his name was Zorag. Um, I, I know that because it was written on the jumpsuit with a, a big Z on it. And um, he looked like the leader, and then he came in and got the equipment out and shoved that right up my ass. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah thanks for listening. I began to ask, why me? Why should I have such a strange experience in Katumba? I'd heard that my great, 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 great uncle through failed marriage, Lord Kenny Guy, had claimed he was abducted. Lord Kenny Guy, an importer, was credited with bringing into New Zealand possums, gorse, and the tall poppy syndrome. Incidentally, his musket went off shortly after this photo was taken. Then I began to wonder if my abduction had any effect on how disjointed the story had become. I'm about to catch the train back to the city. And I sort of wonder what I've learned from my experience in Katoomba. And I think mainly it's that it doesn't matter if you're a rugby player or a fan, or even someone who's just had um, important information downloaded from their backside. At some stage, we're all going to have a Katoomba moment in our life. And I think the most important thing to remember is... Powerful stuff. It just puts things into perspective. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I can't believe, I mean, because that we were obviously in Australia doing that. I had about a day to do that. Yeah. It's about a year's worth of work gone into that. It is, yeah. yeah. Incredible. Ridiculous. How do your brain used to work when you when you kind of... When you were younger. When you had a full one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with it. <laughs> when, you, when you hadn't tried all the synapses. <laughs> I'm going to actually talk to someone and watch the game. So we can ask him some questions. Um, and um, Juan's got a slightly – so Juan Leguizmo, who played uh, a lot of times for the Pumas. 82, is that right, Juan? Hello, guys. Uh, it was 87. 87 is what I said, yep. 87, yeah. yep. Perfect. Nice. I think it was 87, wasn't it, Rick? Yeah. yeah. What was the reaction like in Argentina to the to the Pumas victory? Uh, it was it was a massive win. Uh what I felt it, it's that uh, we are finally getting to that level of intensity or where we can keep playing for 80 minutes. And I think the boys showed that. So I think that's the main thing for, from my point of view. Uh, of course, the win was great, but um, also they also showed that uh, Argentina today... Uh, we are finally getting to, to to those levels of the top teams. So I'm happy for that too. I just uh, came off a plane and watched the Maradona two and a half hour um, doco. doco. Magnificent. It was 500 hours of previous footage that hadn't been released. And uh, the simple question, is it Maradona or Messi? Uh, Messi. Oh, jeez. That's what my son said. Mate, you're siding with the youngsters. I, I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought I had this more of you. my son as well. I, I mean, I know, look, he was a troubled individual, but who isn't? That's probably why you relate you, to you him. You just said it. But make it. Yeah. You just said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're giving us the Christian clean answer of, you know, saying what he, what, he was a troubled individual, so I'll go for the clean clean, uh, clean slate, the good yeah. Christian lad. Oh, I, I, lo I love Maradona. Uh, I think Maradona is we, – we didn't have a leader uh, in the sports in Argentina as him, but then we know the his life and everything just parallel to to football. It wasn't – Well, the, don't the, go to Napoli. I guess that's the, uh, the, the, the moral of the story. I mean, you're <laughs> Italian too, Rick, you know, and, uh, I mean, you're the last prick in the world I'd trust as well. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, um, squeeze the um, going back to the rugby, which is what I wanted to talk about, Maka. Um, the um, <laughs> one of the things I really liked about the Argentinian performance was after the game, where they were celebrating, but there was a lot of talk, um, particularly from Crevy, which was, "Okay, that's great. We've won one. We want to win two. You know, let's not yeah. let's celebrate, but let's get ready for the next one." I mean, that seems to be quite a mind shift. Yeah, yeah, I think we're improving in 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 that part too. Uh, before we used to we used to like okay, we did a good game. Even if we didn't win, we were happy. How crazy! But uh, it used to be like that. Uh, you know, Argentina is not an excuse, but Argentina is an amateur country where we are always like fighting or trying to to to. To go overseas to play rugby, then to to meet uh, for for a for a, a massive game against New Zealand, South Africa, England, or Australia, or whatever. Uh, but today the mentality is changing. 
like the boys are 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 changing that and they are improving the the mindset of the of the of let's say of the of the Argentina rugby because your your sevens team is pretty good too like you know they uh, oh, they, yeah. they won the series Amazing. this year and and I was surprised they didn't make the top four at the Olympics so something's happening over there that's positive yeah very positive um, of course we played the quarterfinals against the, the, the champion against France and it's never easy to play against the, the favorites so but but yes. It, it's been like four four years playing good rugby with the sevens. So. Hey, have you guys done something bad to the French? Because every time the Argentinians run out at, at start the France, they got booed, mate. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Well, yeah. I, what was wrong with that? Honest, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I heard that things happen with the food, and I don't know. I don't know. You know the story about the, these two guys who came uh, when when France came to in July uh, to play against Argentina. These two guys who like went out or whatever. I don't know what they did, but uh, uh, I think we are. <laughs> there is a there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was even I was talking to 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 some of the boys. Who were there, and they were saying, "Yeah, I don't know, I don't know." I reckon it's because they beat you in the World Cup final. Uh, you guys beat them in the soccer World Cup final. <laughs> yeah, mate. they're still a bit salty I think about that's it. One of the reasons. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Cu- couple of the fact that I mean, you know, it's it's a contentious call, but I think Argentine women are slightly hotter than French. <laughs> Just you know, one man's humble opinion. Punta del Este can't, well, you know. can't argue. So, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, what did you think of the All Blacks' performance? Oh, uh, it was. I felt like they were a bit unorganized uh, exits from from their own five meters or ten meters. Uh, it's like we are not used to to, to see the All Blacks in in such a. a uh, like uncomfortable situation. Like I know Argentina did a good job, but normally the All Blacks uh, are much more organized to 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 go away from from there. Uh, and then like ups and downs, uh, it was pretty strange uh, the performance. I know, but I, I was thinking, and maybe one of the of the reasons. Uh, is that uh, new coaches, new coaching staff, new message, the adapting themselves to 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 the new ideas? So, I don't know. I have no idea because, to be honest, I am I am fan of the Oblacks, but I didn't I didn't like what I saw. I don't know, there's too many box kicks anyway. I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. That's a, I reckon it. if 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 you box kicks from your half and the opposition catch it on the full, it's a free kick from where you kicked it from. Yeah, so that'll stop kicks. all the box kicks. Man. Yeah, yeah, totally. And or br- just bring back rucking, and the team going forward gets the bloody ball. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> We're so you changing suck, the game, suck, suck We're all changing of the, the forwards, because suck <laughs> all of the forwards in, so it's not league with line outs. Suck yeah. all of the forwards into the eight, bring back rucking, yeah. and if you go, if the team's going, forward, I don't care if you're crawling forward. If you've got the ball and you're going forward, you keep it. What are you doing? Are you doing any coaching, playing? What are you up to? No, I'm. Co- I coach. Uh... Uh, a, a franchise, Argentinian franchise. We have a, we have a South American tournament in in South America, <laughs> and we have a <laughs> and we have a we have two franchises in Argentina: one in Uruguay, one in Chile, one in Paraguay, one in Brazil, and one in United States. Oh, nice. uh, and we played from January to June. Uh, and I was the coach of one of the RG's franchises, so it was my first experience. Uh, I'm doing that now. I'm starting to plan everything for next year, so so that's my job now. And will you get the boots on and get them play a couple of games? Because like if Rashi can play at 58, like yes, nice, yeah, nice. <laughs> now one, one, one last question: uh, more seizure or Reñones? That was a good pronunciation, eh? See. Sí. Uh, <laughs> like, I would say, I would say, Morcilla or yeah. Reñones. Reñones. Oh. Yeah. Reñones. I, I would say both. Yeah, no, yeah. It's... I would say both. Yeah, see. Sí. Because uh, we, awesome. have a, we have a few more things. Morcilla is black pudding. Reñones is kidneys. Oh. Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the South America and Buenos Aires and, and Argentina. Awful is, is king, you know. It's a be- And cooked so perfectly. 
the only words I knew when I lived there was comida or bebida, which was food or drink. And of the bebida's be food, eh? No, no. No, comida is food. Comida is food. Yeah, okay. Comida. Re comida is food. Reones y mosilla. Nada más. Nothing yeah, more. Yeah, then you have chorizo. <laughs> yeah. Chorizo. Don't yeah. forget chorizo, eh? Oh, yeah, but a, a blood pudding, a blood sausage. Hard to beat. I like a chivito okay. myself. Chavito is important. Chavito, oh, uh, from Uruguay. From Uruguay, man, Chavito. What's that? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, Chavito, it's, yeah. it's Punta del Este Sevens is the only place where you you get a, you go to come out of the nightclub, have breakfast before you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love it then, Mecca. Walk Ooh. out of the nightclub at six in the morning, there's a queue to get in. Really? <laughs> You'd oh. love it, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the big breakfast. Bring, yeah. yeah. Bring me home. It's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, People, beautiful yeah, way of life. Argentina is a crazy country, man. Wow. Uruguay is pretty much the same, man. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, Juan, thanks so much for joining us and putting up with our um, sp sort of Spanish pronunciations and stuff. So, um, oh, yeah. yeah. I thought we were talking about, uh, we were talking in Spanish, man. You told me. What, yeah. what, 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 time, what time is it there now? Well, at least you speak Spanish. Oh, un poquito nada más. Un poquito. <laughs> Muy poquito. <laughs> Muy poquito. <laughs> Yeah, we could all say that. Uh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm semi-fluent. Well, say something. Say goodbye. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh, I'm semi-engorged. Um, <laughs> semi-fluent is too much, eh? Uh, hasta luego. Uh, when it's not chess, what, what, what time is it then? <laughs> que hora es? Que hora es, good. It's uh, quarter to nine. PM. Mm. Thanks, mate. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. gracias. Ciao. Okay, ciao. Oh, Have a good time. Right. I used to like those big steaks in Buenos Aires, mate. Oh. <laughs> Fill up the whole plate. So you order a steak, you get a plate, and it, the steak took up the whole plate, then a whole bowl of chips and a whole bowl of lettuce. Oh, oh mate. I, 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 I lived above a steakhouse called La, La Cabrera in uh, um, Palermo, and it's like one of the – and we were on the roof, and they'd turn the barbecue on or the, the, yeah. the wood fire charcoal at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was like – just like Pavlov's dogs, mate. I just found myself walking down the stairs. It was unbelievable, like ringing the bell. Yeah, yeah. Morcilla, Reñones. Now, you talked about the Punta del Este Sevens. So you, you used to run a team, what was they called? The Mongrels. The Mongrels, that's right. And yeah. you used to basically get a whole lot of people and just travel. This is before the seven circuit was set up. Pretty much, yes. Um, yeah. And was it, in, um, was it in Uruguay that Zinni was Superman? Yeah, yeah. He... Um, <laughs> We played with the Aussies. They they, we, they mixed us up. They called us the Anzacs. So Zinni was there, Frank, myself, and they had John Eels, Jason Little, and uh, I think it was Darren Juni. They, they See, gave us six guys for a sevens team. <laughs> you think they could have given us a seven? <laughs> we used the local guy, called him the POW. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we, were, we played really well because we were trying to outplay the Aussies and they were doing the same. Thing. We smoked it. And it, but afterwards, John Eels is the nicest person in the world because the bar was like three or four deep and uh, no one to go to bar. So we're paper, scissors, rock to see who was going to get all the drinks. Well, because we had a code, you know, we worked it out. We never lost. It was about three rounds and Jason Little comes over, you bastards have got a code, mate. What is it? So we let him in. Darren Janine, three rounds later, yeah. John Eels, mate, 12 times he went to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it is just uncanny. I can't <laughs> <laughs> Nicest uh, guy in the world. He just didn't think anyone would do that to him. Mate. And you, um, was that when uh, that that mongrels group you took Jonah when he was really young? Uh yeah, he went to Singapore. We went to Singapore. Jonah, uh, probably he was probably maybe seventeen, and uh, just right then we knew he was a freak because I, I I played touch against him in Otara, and this big black fella man, and he could run, and and oh, we used to be quite fast, you know, we yeah. we were okay. And I thought, oh, I'll just run around this dude. And I stepped and had a crack, and he was just jogging beside me, smiling. I was like, holy shit, this guy can <laughs> yeah. run. I used and to six, like, six foot five. I used to love the story you'd tell about him, how, how cool you thought he was because of the, the, you know, the glass. Tell that joke, mate. Fuck which, that. Which me laugh. I used to tell a joke about the first time you marked him. And oh. uh, <laughs> he, you know, he thought, this guy's amazing, and then he's wearing the glasses. <laughs> yeah. I, I always used to say when he was running me, I thought he was wearing sunglasses. was his nostrils. That's how big he was. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be black to get away with those ones, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, the one thing I've noticed about the mongrels who went on tour, none of them were white. <laughs> and Strawn was here once. Oh, was he? And Strawn came once. He got drunk on the first night and didn't make training the next day. Oh, never came back. Never mate. come again. Never yeah, came back. Shambles. You know, now yeah. we have, you must, you must like, the, we have the seven circuit, which is amazing, you know, world rugby. 
But you sort of were like the pathfinders. You you sort of created a circuit by just sort of getting a group of mates together and going to all these tournaments. Oh, mate, we used to, and then the then it got more serious. So the Aussies sent their national team to Punta del Este once, oh. and we went with the. We used to call our team the Mongols. Lindsay Rocky called us the Mongols. Um, but um, <laughs> we'd come home at five in the morning and the Aussies would be getting ready to go to training at, at seven. We'd still be in the foyer having breakfast. <laughs> so they were going out. And then we hopped on the plane. The, uh, the Aussies beat us in the final because the guys are just on the piss the whole time. And they were in business class and we were down the back. So, we, oh no, we won actually. And uh, we still beat them. And we're walking on the playing with the trophy, Frank had the trophy, and Bob Dwyer was their coach. We're walking past business class, and Dwyer goes, nice trophy, Frank. Swap before you see. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, the sevens back then, how, you know, that was, you know, the top, you know, all blacks and stuff in the sevens team kind of thing. Now it's sort of yeah. specialists kind yeah. of stuff. And well, you were that, in that, that transition, really, because when you yeah, started well, my the first year, Johnny Shue played, John yeah. Kerwin, well, yeah, TJ Wright, but then, Zinni, Buck. Yeah. They yeah. all played, you know. It was all. But it was even all later, though, they had Cullen and Lomu. Yeah, or, you yeah. Know, well, you that's had... later became the the the, the way to to to, um, to discover these young guys. You know. Yeah. You were the same. He, he was the same. He was. But it was it was guy. it was it was seen as 15s preseason training. Yeah. To do sevens, yeah. you know. Not and now. You know, not not no, yeah, no, no, now. Now those they're guys completely totally yeah. missing yeah. that. They're straight seven specialists. Yeah. 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 So and it's it's but she's a grind on that circuit, mate. Well, Man, your, I remember, your, I remember sons, your sons in the sevens yeah. team. So how does yeah. how does their workload compared to what you used to do? I think their workloads are uh, a little bit more because they're twenty four seven. Like we we would go home for three weeks and then come back and get thrashed by Titch for bloody yeah, two Titch weeks. Yeah, Titch and so know? didn't you? So that's oh. mate, remember remember Titch was big on the psychological thing. I remember going up there. Only like we, we played at one of the Palmy Palmy competitions, oh, and yeah. I got in the sevens team to go to Hong Kong, and we're yeah. sitting up there, and he said, "Right, guys, we're going to sit down." And we're going to do seven minutes of visualising about how this half's going to go. Seven minutes is a long time. I'm like a 20 year old Scarfy, you know. And he said, Mecca, how did the game start? And I said, well, Titch, you wouldn't believe it. They kicked the ball straight to me, put a big left foot step on, went straight out of the post, 7-0. And he said, great, good positive start, son. Bloody well done, you know. And he said, yeah, what happened after that? And I said, we're about a minute 30 in. And I said... Silly pricks kicked it straight back to me. Right foot step this time under the post, 14-0. <laughs> Wouldn't believe it. He said, he said, oh, geez, Maggot, this is going well. You know, he's getting so excited that we were getting. And then he said, then what happened? And then I said, oh, then I got a bit bored. I'm back shagging a bird at Varsity <laughs> in the bed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. And the whole boys are just cracking up laughing. You know? I said, the game's good as fucking over. I've scored two goals under the post. I was on the bench trying to celebrate. Never played again. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because he drew the curtains yeah, and turned yeah. the lights down. <laughs> like his fitness, he was big on. No, like, he was ahead of his. Oh yeah, yeah. the fitness. Oh, yeah, would fitness it be that tough awesome. now for those guys? Or not. Nah, no. Nah, they they, uh, they they're a little bit more sensible now. <laughs> it was really but trying to break his training. Yeah, Titch's training's. It got to a stage because you'd run for two and a half hours, and and there was only ten of us then, so there was no downtime. But it got to a stage in training where where it's actually counterproductive physically. You know, you're actually doing damage to your body, but that's when that training kicked in, and that's where we were real good. We knew that every day at training we, we'd been in the hard place, so when we got to it in the game, it's just mm. another so day, you know. Yeah. was that lacking now, is that what you're saying? Um, not, not lacking, but um, I think Everyone's that… caught up, probably, eh? It, you know? The Argentinians are good. Fiji's always been good. The French, man, they play so well at home. Africa could win it. The Aussies could win it. You know, the Irish are… But really if, if you look now. at rugby full stop now, mm. right, you've got people who are all the same size, all can lift as much as each other, all can run just as fast as each other. So why is it that one team beats the other? It's all mental. Exactly. So when we were kids, it was all when we were playing, it was all about top two inches, right? Yeah. Which is why when the All Blacks came off the field and they've won a game, you never show emotion. You just yeah. walk off like you expected to win. And is this a bit of an issue now? Like but now, now they're jumping up, up and going, woo, when they win, you know? Yeah, so that's yeah. a diametric yeah. change yeah. from the yeah. principle that we had yeah. that Laurie installed, which was if you win, doesn't matter if it's a close game where you thump them, you walk off like you expected to win. Yeah. So it was all about that. But also the opposition, yeah. like we were just talking before, you know, in Argentina about they believe now. Yeah. All the other yeah. teams believe. And when, look, you know, yeah. when you guys were playing, most teams, there was that, they didn't really believe. I'm going back to even yeah. teams like Ireland who hadn't beaten you guys by then. Yeah. There's so many teams now believe they can yeah. beat the All Blacks. And that's, 
almost your, um, yeah. your, your your super cape has gone slightly. You really have to. You, there, there, there was a fear of the, the black jersey and every other team back then. Eh? So remember when this guy got six tries at the World Cup and our team talk was the, the, in the back of these mines against Japan, these guys are scared of the All Blacks. So the first ruck, we're going to take it at their best player, the, the number seven, he was a Tongan boy. Mm. Take it at him, make him tackle, everyone go over the top and kick the fucking shit out of him. We did that. Their their best player was on the ground loose, and the rest of them just clocked out. Mate, <laughs> they just clocked oh, out. Hey, 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 hey! They were playing pretty bloody well, man. Yeah, <laughs> they got two, they got two tries. They got two tries. <laughs> were you on the other yeah. wing? It's, he, it's, I mean, I was on the other wing. I could have got eight tries if he had a pass it every now and then. Yeah. Uh, you got told off for that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I promise you can't get that back. Right, the though, problem was, I'd actually read the the, the the thing that said, oh, you know, some Welshman, you know, Yane Evans or something, you get five tries. And I, I got up to three and I went, fuck, I've got a chance here. You know, there's no fucking way I'm passing it. <laughs> well, just you know, what remains to I'll die with, that, shit I'll die with that record. They're getting closer and closer and closer, you know, no Japan anymore. <laughs> they, um, Rashi, what about, um, like for you, you know, obviously had a great rugby career and now you get the chance. To watch your own boys, you know how, how special is that? Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's like uh, you know they. Uh, it, it's great to see them progress, and uh, but it, it's hard because because I've been telling them all the stuff all all through the years, and they never listened. <laughs> you know, because I'm giving them this just awesome information, but all they hear is make your bed, do the dishes, take the rubbish out. You know, yeah. but now they're in the top stuff. They're like. Like all that stuff you were telling me is actually true. <laughs> so, so, but it's it, it's really good to um, to watch them, and uh, you know they they uh, they worked hard and and getting there now. But you know, like it's uh, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for these young fellas nowadays around the world. You know, so the lucky little bu buggers. But yeah, but then in saying that, you know, your, your career, whatever it may be. Is forty years of your life, you know. The, the sporting opportunity is but five. You look at me when you say yeah. whatever it may be. Well, I mean, you, I, I do so. I do so with the utmost of respect because you know, I mean, you could have, you know, you, you've done everything pretty much, no, no, you know, apart joking. from the sport, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Musician, you're dead right there. You know, radio, fucking chip, chip magnate, yeah. you know, TV, like, for, but you've done yeah, it for twenty yeah, no, years. No, that's so, good, you know. no, it's okay. And that is the hard part about rugby, and, and I think that's what my, my boys are. They could walk away now and still go all right. They're still like they're good dudes, you know. Uh, uh. So, it's, well, uh, once you're in the supermarket game, though, bro, it's you know the families stay pretty tight there. Sheesh, mate, you've always my had kids, a fucking nose kids, for a dollar, haven't you? Mate, they wouldn't. <laughs> they couldn't think of anything worse than picking the shelves at the supermarket. Yeah, well, nor could you, mate. You don't do that. You just get flown around mate, the I'm world the by every, suppliers. I'm on the floor every day, Mecca. Every day. Yeah, no, Stacking the walk of Changi chips. Well, you got to be, so, don't you? Stacking like Changi's, mate. Are they selling all right? <laughs> selling very well. Oh, okay. very well. <laughs> a few more I'll specials now and then would be nice. The show, we'll, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll talk about some special promo. Because when you started out, you had to do every little area in the supermarket, didn't you? Well, it's a funny story how I got into the supermarket game because – uh, Robin Brook was in there and I got invited to the uh, foodies conference and I just got up there and ripped them as you do you know mm -hmm. and uh, so I met the local uh, pack and save guy Vern Hayden and, and local New World guy was Jason Witty here and I, I spoke about coaching the, the kids rugby team out in Otara and they said oh man if you ever need a, a hand with the boys just, just give us a yell you know we can help out financially so we I took them snowboarding this particular year because Kids in Otara, they think Otara's New Zealand, mate. That's all they ever seen, you know. So we went down to the snow. I had 23 players. We had 97 people wanted to come on the trip because <laughs> none of them had been to the snow. Yeah. So I, And I didn't want to say no to anyone, so I, I only had enough money for one bus. So I went to Vern at, at Manukau Pack and Save and Jace, and uh, they paid for both the buses and gave us all the food for five days. And I thought, that's just, I can't yeah. pay you back, mate. And Vern said, no, you can pay me back all right, mate. You're in my produce department for nothing for a week. <laughs> Sweet, bro. So I was, pellets, man, pellets of lettuce, pellets of cauliflower, pellets of cabbage, just trimmed it the whole week. And Friday afternoon, I got called up to the training room. All the managers were there that were having lunch. So I had a feed and then the boss says, right, pay up. And they all started putting 10 bucks on the table. I was like, oh, shit, I ain't got any cash on me as usual, you know. As I said to the boss, I didn't realise we had to pay for lunch, but I didn't bring any money. He goes, no, 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 all these people but bet you wouldn't be here by Friday. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's, he said, I think you got what it takes, mate. We gave you all the shittiest jobs. We don't want, you know, rich guys or, or 
or famous guys. You want guys who get on the floor and do some work. Oh, nice. and, and that's how I started it. It's just literally. And that's tell them, tell these boys who was in that. Like, because I, I remember doing the fundraiser. I came and did the fundraiser in Ontario right, for, the, for yeah. the boys. Yeah. And uh, but a few of them, a few of them like that East Tamaki team have kicked on. Yeah, well, um, that particular team we had uh, uh, for my he, he played for Samoa at first five. Our best player was Vinny. He's he's passed away now. Our centre was uh, Milani Nano. Who played for the Blues? The winger is Sione Molia, who is in the New Zealand Sevens now, and the fullback was Roger Tuivasa. Wow! So yeah, that, that was one little team in Otara, and then the next team I, I coached at East Tamaki, Tupo Vai was the lock. He's in the All Blacks now. Yeah. Uh, my other son Rob, he was the other lock, so he's he's playing Super Rugby now. Brady's in the New Zealand Sevens team, and there's I think three or four of them are playing for New Zealand Touch. So gonna show you this the the talents. Everywhere, man. They just so it's a bloody be beautiful seen. thing, isn't it? To, yeah. and, and you reckon you can sort of spot it around the age of sort of five or six. You see the kids, and you go, "Oh, that kid's got a good chance." Roger was good at seven. Yeah, yeah. You know, as yeah. long as as long as the genetics allow them to grow big enough, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can tell it pretty early, and it's quite nice to watch these kids and their attitude, and just sort of, you know, being a parent on the sideline watching yeah. them go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you tell it an age? Whether they should maybe um, a bit later, whether they should go to league or rugby, or is it really just a bit of a good footy lottery. player? Is a good footy yeah, player, yeah, whether it's, it's league right. or rugby, you know. Yeah. yeah. But the, out in South Auckland, West Auckland, all those sort of areas, talent's their biggest enemy because mm. all those kids can do it, mate. Too Five much. step yep. tackle, yeah. Have a ball on a string. Talent's their biggest enemy. If they can, if they can uh, marry the hard work with the talent, those are the kids that carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So it's mental tenacity, eh? Yeah. Toughness. And, and you a lot saw of kids that, rely on their talent, and that's it. That's where it gets a bit scary, enough. too. And you, you saw know, that because... in Roger? You saw that Oh, Roger? yeah. He, 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 so all our boys, like half the team never had a telephone in the house. Just couldn't afford it, which is a real bugger when it rained because you could only ring half of them up to cancel training. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have to go up to – and the other half would turn up to training. Be there. Rain, yeah. And Roger was always one of those kids. Mm. His father, Johnny, was the other coach. And he used to make Roger run home. So he'd be running down East Tamaki Road, sidestepping the power poles on the way back to Ferguson well, Road. And there it is. There, there it is right you, there. If you want to become a professional sportsman, yeah, you've got yeah. to have that attitude. And that's yeah. the one thing that will define you. It's not the skill or the ability. It's whether or not your pip says, I'm going to be able to do it, and whether that's somebody's it. told you you've got the ability to do it and believe that you can dream yep. it and you can yep. do it. Tupo, Tupo, because Tupo, Vi and, and Rob were, were, were the locks in our team, and they were, they were playing a year up because the older brothers – uh, then he had one car, so you had to play in the team that was there, you know. <laughs> and they were the two youngest in the team, and now they're the two toughest guys from their team. Mm. Yeah, know? yeah. Because they had to play a year up in Auckland. It's always the youngest brother. And when right? when Roger went to made because he was an outstanding young rugby player, you know, uh, at yeah. schoolboys yeah. and stuff. And then when he went to league, he had to give you a call. Yeah, his father made him call me. He said, "Well, you're going to go to league. You better ring Eric." He said, "Oh, Eric, uh, I'm going to league." <laughs> I said, well, you go there, learn as much as you can, come back and be an all-black one day. Yeah. And he did it, you know, he did it. So I oh, was stoked for him. Good yeah. kid too, man. Real good kid, solid family. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a real, real success story. Yeah, it must be good for you to sort of, you know, have been involved at, at such a young age with these guys and then just to see them reach their potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, that there's, there's four or five guys, other guys in that team that could have, it's done just as well. Yeah, they it's had the, it's the whole community around the individual, eh? You know, yeah. and it's, it starts at the family. If the family's tight, that's the start that the kid needs because yeah. typically their dad and their mum are, you know, you know Wonder Woman and Superman to yeah. them. So if they say, yeah. hey, you can do it, they yeah. believe it. Yeah. And then the community starts getting on board and that impetus and that gravitas of everyone in behind you, everyone supporting it. Yeah. Particularly, <laughs> I suspect, in, you know, the Polynesian culture and the Maori culture. Well, I saw the sevens, the girl sevens up in uh, – up in Paris, they had a huge amount of family there. Yeah. So you could tell that's been from an early age. You know, it was just – and it just lifted them through that. The girls were – man, they were sharp, man. I love watching the girls play Aussie, eh? Skill level's right up there. Mm, yeah. Right mm. up there. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, these are the positive sides of rugby. We're still sort of, you know, recovering from a loss, you know, on the weekend. And – um. Fortunately, we had. Uh, Where are you going with this, mate? That's well, the, the I, most morbid, I, bloody. No, we've got over it. We've got over it. 
No, but I'm trying to get to the next clip. Do you so want to I'm hey, to, called, you look like you're about to cry. It's called but we're on a positive vibe then. Yeah, it's called really a segue. Talk about bring it down, hey? Well, I, I don't have a positive clip to play. Well, just just try to put a positive bloody look on your face and so, say something with enthusiasm, for I, Christ's sake. You know, what, what a great conversation. And, and, and this is, you know, it's such a fulfilling oh, game of rugby. And <laughs> what are you going to come back as? Oh, well, Lana came back as Rushy. <laughs> Look, this is what uh, we had Sam Neill on the show after we lost the uh, semi final, and he just gave us some advice about how to handle <laughs> how to handle a loss. I was actually commentating for Channel Seven. Oh no, a, a job for which I'm spectacularly unqualified. And yeah, and of course I was I was gutted at the end, like we all were, but not gutted for me or or even for New Zealand, but but for those thirty blokes who I think have played their heart out this year. They're a spectacular side and completely inspirational. And and I was also gutted for the real possibility that they have to go home to three million misery guts. Yeah. The thing about ex- expectations, it's, it's a big ask for, look, 11 of the guys that ran onto that field on Saturday are 25 and under. They're really young guys, it's a very young side. And to carry the morale of an entire country on those young shoulders, I think it's too, it's, it's too big an ask, it's unfair. Um, I would suggest that uh, uh, we get behind these All Blacks. I think they've been absolutely fantastic. They've had a wonderful year. So after, <laughs> after Sam, uh, after that uh, World Cup in 2003, was it in mm-hmm. Australia? I think... Um, no, it wasn't. It was 2007. No, it wasn't. And um, Sam Neill actually wrote a, an email to me to forward on to New Zealand rugby to say, please don't change the coach. I think the All Blacks are magnificent and yeah. stuff like that. He's a passionate man. I love his passion. He I just love the fact forward. that he cared that much. You know? I love the fact that he cruises around uh, in in Queenstown and Arrowtown just like Jack the Lad, you know, like not not anyone special. Is man. that right? Yeah, yeah just yeah. so low-key, so yeah. cool. Nice. I've, I've always admired that about the man. Yeah, great man. All right, also um, – this was an experiment and what it'll be like getting everyone in the same room again. And um, is it over? Yeah, when are you guys off to Europe? I think we should do the next one in the sauna, like <laughs> you know, like uh, you know, more mine. intense, more yeah. heated up. So, all the best for whatever you do, and I hope I never see some of you again. See what times are they? I mean, that's uh, you started the show by saying, Look, that show was bad, and that was a net result of having you know, Lady Day on the show. Oh, yeah, and, you know, that show was bad. So, who, who are you going to chop? Next time, or well, this time? Oh, that'll be me. That'll, that'll be me. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm just reading between the lines. You three have been on all of them, and everybody else gets blamed for. No, I, I was. Yeah. I missed one, and that was the highest rating one. That I wasn't on. <laughs> so, 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 so yeah. I've got a complex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and when Lana was on, that rated through the roof. I'm happy to miss her next if it's a stand down. <laughs> What do I need to do to get kicked off this? <laughs> oh, I don't know, because you've tried fucking hard. <laughs> should, should we take a couple of weeks off, everyone? And that way we can sort of keep him, keep him, you know, keep him wanting more. You know? Well, that way Rick will want us back because he's yeah. promised that this show's going to go for a bit longer than this. Yeah. So if we just don't turn up next week and leave, leave, leave Rick by myself. sitting in the corner. <laughs> I just I found it ironic that more than enough all weeks. of us were overseas for X amount of weeks. Yeah. All of us, Rashi, yeah. Mark, myself, Lana, Lana yeah, you're yeah. the only one that was here. Yeah. Yet we all had to zoom in. It would have been a lot easier if you went over and joined us. But you couldn't do that, could you? No. 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 You had to sit here in your – in your, in your well, like does, does, logical. does the sun go around the earth? No. No, the earth goes around the sun. Muhammad go to the mountain? No. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm lost. I'll see you next week. Good night. Fuck, I hope not. <laughs> Mate, how'd you go with the TAB? Did you follow my advice? Yeah, I bet on against the All Blacks. And uh, what were you happy I about? wanted to get Naki on board. I thought you were that bloody lamentable. You haven't won anything. Yeah. That we needed somebody who was capable. Mate, I, I got a return from Argentina, and I also bet on Hamish Kuda win the Olympic high jump gold. Mate, we're in the money. <laughs> I'm really good at it. We are in the money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to spend it, but.